Welcome to the open house for DPW Facility 2. And before we join Brian White, Operations Manager, for a tour of the facility, we want to get a few comments from Burlington Town Administrator Paul Sagarino, who was instrumental uh, in the process of getting this facility and the recreation maintenance facility approved through the appropriations process, uh, which we waited apparently 40 years for since the, <laughs> since the original plan to, uh, to do this. So give us a brief update. How much did this cost, Paul? What, what are the advantages of having this over the previous facility? Well, Phil, as you know from being in the previous facilities, they were deplorable. Mm -hmm. I mean, they were open to the outside. There were wild animals running around <laughs> in them. Um, the bathroom facilities were, were unsuitable. And, you know, really one of the biggest things you want out of a DPW facility is we have a lot of expensive equipment. Mm -hmm. You know, our trucks can cost, you know, half a million dollars, $250,000 per truck. So you really don't want those um, expensive capital purchases being left outside, mm -hmm. which we've had to do for, for many mm -hmm. years now. So it should really extend the life of our equipment. And again, uh, I think we all know they're very underappreciated as a department, but mm -hmm. when you need the Department of Public Works, they're always there. Mm -hmm. And we have an outstanding department, and uh, we're very happy that we, you know, we can sort of give our first-class department a first-class facility mm -hmm. to work in finally. And uh, again, very grateful uh, for everybody's involvement to date, Ways and Means, Town Meeting Support, the Select Board, Planning Board, Board of Health. We had a lot of help to get where we are today, right. and we're very grateful to the town for supporting the project. Right. Well, in retrospect, it's extremely fortuitous that we're able to get this done at this point in time. When we look back over two years and see the inflation rates and municipal bond rates and what we bonded this project out for then versus two years later what we would be bonding it out for now yeah it was it was pretty lucky but again we didn't have anything to do with that it's a, and it was a result of you know sort of um unfortunate things that are going on in the world mm -hmm. but um the project is is on schedule and on budget uh, we're not yet complete yet um the final uh, phase of this project is to redo the gas pumps up mm -hmm. behind the, the town hall and right. exit, which uh, the pu public uh, works, right. um, they administer those as well. So. Great. Okay, thanks very much to Paul Sagarino, Burlington Town Administrator. Well, we're here at this giant uh, DPW facility. There's two of them, actually, the other rec maintenance facility as well. And... Uh, Apparently going out of the top, this is a crowning achievement. It only took 40 years for the town to do this. <laughs> well, that tells you how lucky I am. I mean, mm -hmm. it's amazing that uh, the town was able to build this facility during the time that I was here. I mean, mm -hmm. that happens less than once in a lifetime for any of pe you know, people that do my, my profession. You know? right. So, yes, I'm very excited that we were able to mm -hmm. complete these two projects. Okay, we're going to let you go. We, uh, we do have a, uh, a retrospective planned with John for his entire career here in Burlington, but we'll save that for later on. Thank you, John. Thank you, Phil. Hi, I'm here with Brian White, who's uh, Burlington's operations manager in the DPW department, uh, and he's going to give us a grand tour today of the, what is the actual title of this building? Uh, DPW, uh, DPW garage. That's it. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> even after facility. 40 years, it no, didn't, it it didn't uh, go up. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, we've been calling it site two because this is the second, obviously the second of the buildings, um, site one being recreation and central maintenance. But mm -hmm. uh, yeah, site two doesn't, doesn't ha have much of a flavor to it. <laughs> exactly. Well, tell yeah. us what the benefits are. I know uh, uh, automatically I can see all the equipment, this is the first time in the history of Burlington that we've gotten all the equipment under one roof. Absolutely. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So obviously you can see all the space in here to be able to work. The old garage, I mean, we used to have to pack cars in head on. It was like Tetris. You'd have to get one car out, another car out, maneuver mm -hmm. it just to get a piece of equipment that might be in the back out. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, you can see uh, all angled parking. Every, there's a space for everything. So any piece of equipment, with the exception of a few things that might be stored behind mm -hmm. some of the trucks but anything can get in and out you know it, it simplifies it greatly mm -hmm. the plows you know when they come in uh, for sanding and, and snow removal operations they can pull right into the spot uh, drop off the plow pull back out mm -hmm. um, so getting plows on and off very well, seamless obviously this 
10 or 15 million dollars worth of equipment here. What does it mean to the longevity of the equipment to be able to house them inside? Absolutely, yeah. It'll definitely extend the life of it, maintaining them with all the hose connections to keep them washed down, keep get, get any of the salt and everything off of them. Temperature controlled, uh, climate controlled. Uh, definitely will increase the, the lifespan mm -hmm. of the vehicles. Right. Now it's an environmentally sensitive area. Uh, you are going to be cleaning a lot of vehicles, etc. Salt. What kind of a drainage system does it have in terms of filtration? This this facility has to has to meet all the uh, the, the same requirements DEP and conservation has for any any other site in town. So there's advanced uh, filtration systems uh, like storm scepters mm -hmm. and whatnot that will take out any uh, any you know, particulate matter and, mm -hmm. and uh, debris. Mm -hmm. uh, and you we're on a rigorous uh, cleaning schedule as well for, to sweep and, uh, and, and maintain the, the structures on site to keep them operational. This wing, this is where all the supervisors are, the, the superintendents for both water and sewer, highway, as well as the working and lead foremans are all housed here. Previous building, there were, there were no offices, it was just a desk, everyone's kind of facing each other, pointing, there's no private phone conversations, there's very few areas to get any kind of rest during storm events, but now as you can see, everyone has their own office, except for the lead and work informant. They do share an office that is typically bigger. It's also a conference room with a whiteboard. Previous building, again, there was no real area. You know, there was a whiteboard, but no, no area to meet, go over logistics and, and whatnot. All right, so we are here in the muster room, or break room, as you, you can call it. So you can see how big it is. It's, again, a, a vast improvement over what, was, what we had before, which was actually nothing. Um, so as you can see, I mean, it's outfitted uh, for, again, any, any late night storms. You know, the, the guys now have a microwave, uh, fridges with ice makers, plenty of storage for any, any food and snacks that they want to keep in here. This will also serve as a dual purpose area for any training that we conduct. We don't have it yet, but there'll be a big, big screen to be able to train the guys on, on uh, any, any various things, uh, OSHA and, and that, that sort of thing. So it's great room to, to regroup and uh, refresh. So this is called the storm event room, which is alternatively can, can be called the bunk room. So now instead of trying to get a little sleep in a vehicle during large storms, uh, the guys can quickly come in here, lay down properly, uh, get, a little, get a little rest before heading back out to finish up, finish up work. The, the guys are really going to love this room. So now we're here in the water and sewer uh, shop garage. Uh, so this is where they, the water and sewer guys would keep all their components that when there's a water break at, at one o'clock in the morning, this is where they'd keep all the parts. All, everything's inventoried and uh, on, on, you know, on the shelves organized so they can quickly come in and get, get what they need. They even have a lift here when they need to work on pumps or motors or uh, small, smaller pieces of equipment. Instead of kneeling down on the ground, uh, cold ground, and, and, and hurting their knees uh, and backs, you know, now they can do work on things at the proper height. And then, uh, as you can see, there's also a mezzanine area for additional storage. Again, just more equipment for water main breaks, sewer breaks, sewer backups, water meters, all that sort of stuff. Okay, so we're still in the water and sewer garage, and this is the town sewer skater system, one of the areas where, where we have this located. But you can see here, this, uh, all of our sewer pump stations are, are on uh, communications, are, uh, are sent back to here. And so this is a main screen where you can tell uh, which stations are running, which pumps are running, the, the, you know, roughly how much they're pumping. Uh, the levels of them, so these will also produce alarms if, if the wet wells, the sewer level gets too high in the, in the pump station, so the guys get an alarm uh, on their phone uh, that, that, does, that could be an issue at one of the pump stations, they can come over here quickly, you know, look at the, look at the alarms, look at, you know, try to diagnose what, what's going on uh, to prop, you know, get whatever they need here possibly and respond to the, any emergency promptly. The generators as well, the generators are, are on here too. So you can also control on the skater, you know, shut pumps off, run, run generators uh, remotely. So this is a very important tool for uh, diagnosing emergencies, prevent uh, sewer backups in, in people's houses. 
So now we are in the highway garage. So this is specific to the highway division. This is where they keep, similar to the water and sewer, everything that they need here. Um, they'll have their signs uh, if there's ever knockdowns for stop signs and, and street signs and, and all that sort of stuff. Cones, uh, barrels, uh, other pieces of equipment that uh, maybe doesn't make sense to go in the big garage. Similarly, they also have a mezzanine area, so additional storage for, for everything, some line painting equipment. So each, each division has their own space specific to them that they can keep the, the essentials for each division. Okay, that wraps up today's tour of DPW facility number two. Uh, we want to thank uh, operations manager Brian White for the tour today, and we want to wish him uh, many great years in working in a new facility rather than that old thing that we promised 40 years ago that we would replace soon. Thanks, Brian. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a good day. Mm -hmm.